One of the most common positions today in the American left, from the liberal to the socialist, is the support for a universal health care project, most commonly described as Medicare for All. Since this policy has become mainstreamed and its implementation seemingly just a matter of time, what's a proper communist position on the matter? To truly understand the origins of the so-called struggle for universal health care, we must travel back in time more than a century. You may be surprised to learn that one of the first universal health care projects in Europe emerged not from a mass working class movement, but from arch-conservative Otto von Bismarck, a German chancellor of more than 20 years. His health insurance bill of 1883 established mandatory health insurance throughout the nation, with the cost partly covered by employers. This law has evolved itself throughout time to what exists today in Germany, a multi-payer healthcare system. The German healthcare system didn't emerge from immense working class struggle, nor socialist or communist policy, nor active unionism. It emerged as a method of the bourgeois state, of which Bismarck reflected quite well, to direct grievances and problems of healthcare into a state solution that did not fundamentally alter the cause of workers' exploitation and suffering. Universal healthcare in Germany has served as a method to disable radicals, especially those with an accurate class analysis. Instead of making clearer and more obvious the antagonistic relationship between the bourgeois and their government with the working class, this sort of policy served to blur the lines and create an illusion of collaborative health care policy development. Bismarck is largely responsible for the creation of the modern idea of the welfare state, of which all mainstream parties in modern Germany advocate. All of these social programs have a not-so-hidden intent behind them, to create a large class of workers loyal not to their own interests, but to the interests of the bourgeoisie and their state. This was accomplished by rendering the working masses entirely reliant upon the state for their well-being. In essence, this welfare scheme provided minimal protection at the cost of the political independence and power of the working class. Bismarck's great successes in this regard were repeated across the bourgeois states of Europe, and even in America to some degree, with Medicaid and Medicare. In Britain as well, it was not a struggle of workers and unionists which passed their first national health insurance legislation, but a liberal minority government in 1911. Again and again, we see the major leaders in universal health care systems originating not from the working and toiling masses, but from the national business political elite. This is no coincidence, and this is not by chance. Medicare for all does not substantially reorient the economy. Instead, I will demonstrate that the existing Medicare for All proposals in the United States will drive down the wages of many millions of people. In nearly every implementation throughout the world, universal health care is financed at least in part by a payroll tax. The tax rate is sometimes a greater percentage of income than what the average American pays today in job-provided health insurance premiums. Formalizing and legislating the requirement for workers to contribute to national health insurance programs, as is the norm presently, is simply a tax that only truly applies to those who work for their income. This form of taxation does not apply to those who do not labor and receive their income through capital revenue. You can see that this sort of financing, which would undoubtedly be used in an American replication of this system, is a form of class warfare waged upon workers by the bourgeois state. It is something to be resisted, not blindly advocated for. In the Congressional Budget Office's report, economic effects of five illustrative single-payer health care systems, several claims are made regarding the consequences of implementing a universal health care system in America. First, the composition of workers' labor compensation would change because employers would no longer provide health care benefits and would pass along the savings to employees, increasing their taxable wages. One of the first items mentioned is how the single-payer program would involve cost savings for businesses. This scheme would, of course, benefit employees in the form of higher wages. However, us living in the real world know that this most likely will result in similar wages with higher corporate profits. This sort of optimistic estimate is predicated upon the goodwill of employers who have oligopolistic control of wages. The report's second point is that households' health insurance premiums would be eliminated and their out-of-pocket health care costs would decline. 
If we are to presume that Medicare for All would result in the elimination of health insurance premiums, as seen in the United Kingdom, France, and Germany, it is reasonable to assume that the revenue financing mechanisms of such programs would emerge from equally harmful and anti-working class measures, with a primary revenue generator in the United States for the federal government being income tax, and with the taxation of other revenue generating items being limited or sealed off by the pro-corporate courts, it leaves only regressive taxes that disproportionately affect the poor as being methods of funding. The third point in the report is that administrative expenses in the healthcare sector would decline, freeing up productive resources for other sectors and ultimately increasing economy-wide productivity. Perhaps the only point of merit in this report's abstract is that it almost certainly would reduce the amount of administrative costs endured by the current structure of health care in the United States. However, this is not a point of communist organizing. Communists should not care about streamlining the existing capitalist economy or about making the capitalist economy more efficient. Efficiency in a capitalist economy always means more production of surplus value for less wages, thus a higher rate of exploitation within the existing economy. If you are advocating for this point, then you are almost certainly not a communist. The fourth point is that reduced payments to providers would increase productivity and efficiency in providing health care. However, some of the reduction in payment rates would be passed through to workers' wages in the health care sector and throughout the supply chain. This is where the crux of the problem with the government-administered health care program lies. It is a divisive policy by design, meant to orchestrate a conflict between the masses of workers, consumers of health care, and those who are providing these services. This organization of the economy makes the direct interest of both the working masses and the government coincide in the driving down of wages to lower costs, and consequently the amount of revenue collection necessary for the provisioning of these services. Rather than a socialist or communist means of health care administration, this program would result in nothing more than a corporatist alignment of the economy in which, while purporting to act as a mediator between the different interest groups, it actually drives a wedge into the solidarity of the working class. Universal health care projects have always been a divisive point for so-called socialists and communists. These sorts of welfare projects time and time again lead so many good-hearted activists into the dead end of reformist anti-work policy. The bourgeoisie strikes where many of us are weakest, our ability to care for our fellow workers. By connecting the provisioning of health care to support of the bourgeois capitalist system, left-wing radicals are presented with a false dichotomy. Either support the state or support mass death. It is our duty to reject this portrayal of universal health care as the goal of communism, and instead reveal Medicare for All's complicity with a continuation of the bourgeois capitalist state. Universal health care might save some lives, but it comes at the cost of accepting the most oppressive economic system in human history. Universal health care does not create revolutionaries. It creates conservatives. It creates capitalists. It creates the death of workers. Thanks for watching. If you liked this video, please hit that like button. If you have any comments, leave them in the comment section. And if you want to see more, please subscribe. And if you want to see me being as serious as I am here, feel free to follow me on Twitter at RevLux.